KTRU is Rice University's own radio station. We've proudly been on the air since 1967. We've changed positions on the dial a few times. Right now we are 96.1 FM, but we are also streaming live on the web at ktru.org. So we have a huge listenership that far transcends the campus community. So I was excited about KTRU before I even got to Rice. Oh, I totally knew about KTRU. I was a total music nerd in high school. And you click on the ktru.org website and it's this all black with like bright yellow text. And it's like, we are st eclectic student run organization. I was like, yeah, that's what I want to get involved with. And I actually like asked for stickers so I could put them on my laptop before I even got here. I had seen the stickers around campus, which is how, it's how they get you. And I went to a football game and it just so happened that I met a DJ there. She said, hey, show up to my shift. Like, I think you're cool. Let's DJ together. Like, I want to see you in the station. It was a blast. She brought me on as the archivist and the rest is history. So when I first came to Rice about six years ago, I remember that KTRU sent out new DJ applications and I filled one out and then I was too nervous to submit it and turn it back in because I thought, oh, I don't know if I'm uh, cool enough or interesting enough to play music on KTRU, but that's actually not how KTRU is at all. KTRU is a place for everybody. I remember being very nervous about how I was going to DJ my first shift. I was looking around and I really couldn't recognize anyone. So I started picking out CDs kind of randomly. And then in the back right of the station about eye level, I saw practically the full discography of Lady Tron. I am a huge Lady Tron fan, and I remember being so relieved and kind of just made aware that I was, in a way, represented in KTRU. It actually changed my musical tastes and widened them and deepened them. I thought I knew a lot about music, and I know so much more since. It was a, I learned a whole new way of listening to music and seeking out music and having less fear of listening to weird stuff that uh, has really helped make me a more musical person, a happier person, and a more creative person. And, and in fact, it was a rule that we had to be quirky. Everyone involved in KTRU is so weird in like the best way. Everyone has like such weird interests and they're so passionate about them. And it totally makes sense because like I'm exactly the same way. A lot of my time goes to KTRU things and it's because it's such a great place. Um, I love walking into the station and seeing all of the years and years of weird music kids doodling on the walls. When I first walked into the station, it immediately became my favorite place on campus, without a doubt. I'd never seen anything like it. It was so much cooler than I could have possibly imagined. Like from the moment that you see the front door to the studio covered with all the years of KTRU bumper stickers and art that the students have created, you just know you're coming into a, an extremely different place. Not just different for Rice, but just different, period. <laughs> you could feel how many people had walked through it and also see all of this literal writing on the walls. I can still read the wall and be like, oh, that's cool. You know, here's someone who's into the same music as me. I have absolutely taken a Sharpie to the walls. It's only natural. <laughs> We are currently in the lounge inside the station. It is a very maximalist space. There are things all over the walls from different bands that have visited, different people who have worked here. We're in the newsroom of the station. So this is where a lot of the programming happens and then all of the new music to review. One of the defining aspects of KTRU is the fact that almost all of our albums, CDs and cassettes have reviews with them. The incredible thing about them is that the reviews capture a moment in time when, for instance, Neutral Milk Hotel was not popular yet. And so you're reading a DJ's feelings and thoughts about this artist who would someday become huge, right? And, and you're getting a sense of what it was to hear them for the very first time. The reviews are, they're fun to read on air, they're fun to share with other people, it's fun to see the little doodles that students have written, and occasionally you'll get DJs arguing back and forth with each other in the reviews. It, it almost seems like there's different eras when you're reading the reviews, where for a while everyone's just like jotting a few things down, or it, and then it goes to these like handwritten reviews where they're just 
tearing apart every single CD that comes in and they're like, oh, it's just ripping off the Velvet Underground. The first time I reviewed albums, I checked out five at once, which was ambitious but it really taught me what I was looking for. My favorite CD that I reviewed was Natalie Jane Hill, and then I found out that she was based out of Austin, so she was actually one of our artists for ODS last year, which I thought was one of the coolest things is, A, that we get music from small local artists, and B, that then we make connections and reach out to those small local artists to, if we can, get them to come here and play. I think that k True is absolutely maybe the most important thing about my uh, experience at Rice. People always ask me like, oh, what's your major, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, what do you like to do? And it's like, oh, college radio. Like, that's that's what I spend my my days doing. And people will be like, oh, I can't make my shift today. Like, it's free and for anyone up to take. And I live for the days where those like line up and I can just go in and play music. The specialty show that, that I least liked uh, was the chicken picking show. Uh, and that's only because it was right after mine. Uh, and that always meant I had to go home <laughs> and I couldn't keep playing records. You can always go into booth and just have, you know, your one hour where it's just you and the stacks and you can just relax. That has also provided like such a grounding theme throughout, throughout my time here. k is one of the few groups on campus that I think has roots in the Houston community. Our DJs are both students and community members. One of the coolest things that I heard about was our Navrang show, which was specifically for South Asian music. And when people talked about the Navrang show, they talked about how there was this huge South Asian community in Houston who was really like excited about this show and listening to this show all the time. When I started mentioning to musicians in the Houston area that I was the music director of a radio station, it was so interesting to see how many doors opened for me. It was, oh, you're the music director of a radio station? I have an album on hand, let me give it to you. Or, I have a QR code, please scan it. I was given a spreadsheet of every small underground concert happening in Houston for the next three months because I mentioned that I was a music director. And just, Having those doors open to you as a student and as a DJ are just so awesome. I've had some amazing opportunities through k that I would be remiss not to mention. Going to the College Media Association Conference in New York last year, the way that we interact with like, the greater Houston community and the way that we are weird, wacky, and wonderful and super proud of it felt so singular to me and I loved that. And then immediately after that, I got to go cover South by Southwest in Austin and K-True facilitated that. k is just like awesome at giving you as much as you put into it. It's so fun to be in a place that is so emphatically drenched in its own history. <laughs> Cause every, every day, every two days, I will find a new cassette, a new CD, a new vinyl, something that is signed by the artist, has been touched by someone who made it huge in music. We have a station ID from Willie Nelson <laughs> and Stevie Nicks. That's crazy. This is such a dream come true. And it was a dream I didn't even know I had until I got here. Our record albums go back to the 1960s when the station was founded. We have been collecting literally for 50 years. And so to walk in and just be surrounded by years worth of accumulated music that, that students and our community DJs have put so much thought and time and effort into curating, you feel like immediately like you're part of something a lot bigger than you. So right now, k True occupies the space in the Student Center where it's been since 1986 or 87. Soon, the Student Center will be torn down to make way for a brand new Student Center, much more state-of-the-art. And at that point, also, we will have a much more state-of-the-art k True. The cool thing about this move is that it's enabling the students to think about, okay, well, without this physical space, what are our possibilities instead? So I think it's an exciting time. I'm not very worried about k True losing any of its culture because k True culture is never lost, it just changes. Trying to say that this space could be exactly recreated or trying to say that this is how k True will always be would be detrimental to the fleeting nature of the beauty of what is. And so I don't know what will happen to k True during the move, but I know that when k True comes back when we have a new permanent station, people will make marks on it that are all their own. And I hope that there's a graffiti party, you know, to really start off the new station with a bang. I love this space and I love the history of k True, everything that we have been and that we will be. 
we're going to keep doing, we're going to keep believing, we're probably going to paint a rabbit on the wall, at least one, and we're just going to keep being our wacky little selves. I'm very excited for it. <laughs>